That was a bit of a ball ache. It took about half an hour in there, but we got it done. We got everything shipped out. Now, the sun's probably setting, so let's go watch it somewhere. I wanted to come out earlier today, but it was raining really hard. Like it was storming, but it's just not, not that crazy of a storm. Like this is just normal Welsh weather. I imagine the storm is hitting somewhere really hard, but not here. We're not getting like 100 mile an hour winds. Basically the media lied again. Surprise, surprise. That's why I didn't actually listen to them. I was more excited than in fear. They canceled all the schools and stuff. They canceled like everything. And there's barely anybody out right now. Because everyone's just like, okay, we'll stay at home. Sure. I've done it for two years. Why not do it again? Mr. Jass has been very patient with me. Now I must take him somewhere fun. I just want to get up somewhere high so we can look at the clouds. Because there's some pretty epic clouds coming through. It's a good thing about fast winds is that it moves everything across so quickly. So you don't really have the same clouds for very long. I mean, technically you don't have the same cloud ever for any amount of time. It's just there and it's gone in an instant. It's always changing. <laughs> Come on, Jess. <laughs> just, just jump in it. It's not... <laughs> it's just a puddle, bro. You can do it. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you can do it. Alright, fine. I'll find it. <laughs> that was too funny. He was confused. So it's a little bit windy, but I mean, there's nothing normal, nothing, nothing new for Wales. This is just what it's like here. Yeah, sorry, today's not an exciting storm vlog, but we will go up a hill so we can get some wind in our face. I was honestly tempted to climb a mountain today, but I thought <laughs> it would just be silly. I'm just gonna be really windy. <laughs> There's a website called barefooters.org and they've like wrote, <laughs> they quoted one of my vlogs where I talked about the barefoot challenge. I mean, today's probably a good day to do it. So let's uh, get on top of this hill and we'll talk about it. more snow on the mountains. Oh, we're gonna get a sunset as well. Nice. Finally a sunset. I get about one sunset a week because the clouds usually cover it. I think today we get one. You, it's a bit windy. A little bit. Maybe if I let my hair down you can see. A little bit windy. <laughs> okay, so what I'm noticing is the air is much colder today. Frozen nose, frozen toes, frozen fingers. But overall, it's not that cold. It's just a bit, just because I'm on top of a hill. The wind's pretty intense up here. But I'm not really noticing any fallen trees or anything. Nothing new. When the storm's finally over, I'll go through the woods behind my house, see if there's any more damage. Not that there's anything I can do, but I can salvage the wood, use the wood for log. Uh, for, for burning, stuff like that. Let me set this challenge for everyone so I can put this as the title of the video. So you know, I've been barefoot for like s nearly seven years, nearly. Six years, nearly seven years. It's not that bad. It's not as hard as people think, but there is a lot of challenges that come with it. For example, it doesn't matter how tough your, to your feet are, thorns still find their way in. Just because they're really thin, it's like being walking on needles. So glass doesn't really affect me. Um, nails, sure but they're not very common. The only time I've ever stood on a nail was exploring an abandoned building. So my challenge for you guys, my magic mushies, try and do a week of barefooting, but you only have to be barefoot when you're in nature, somewhere where it's safe. 
I'm not asking you to be barefoot in the cities or or stuff like that. If you have flip flops or barefoot shoes, then yeah, wear those because it will give you the top of your feet the experience of being outside for a whole week. A lot of people have never done that before, not since they were kids. So my challenge for you, can you spend a week barefooting? Can you do it? Can any of you out there survive a week? If you've got to go to work or go into stores, make sure you wear some shoes for that. You don't need to be barefoot for that, that's not, not the challenge. The challenge is to spend seven days walking in nature barefoot. Be, be safe, be careful. Obviously everyone lives in different climates, different cities, so you need to be aware that people leave needles in the woods, people leave glass in the woods. What barefooting does is make you so present for every step because you have to be looking at what you're stepping on to protect yourself. So yeah, it forces you to be, to be present as you move around. And that's kind of the beauty of it. There's also the grounding effects, but I don't understand all of that, so I'm not gonna try and explain it. You'll have to do your own research on grounding and earthing, but. So yeah, my challenge for you, spend seven days in nature barefoot. Yeah, capture a clip 10 to 30 seconds long, just showing your environment, how you feel. That's it, that's the clip. So if everyone out there that tries this challenge, please record that for me. And then sometime next week, We'll gather all the clips and make a little montage of everyone trying the seven day barefoot challenge. So yeah, good luck to everybody. Um, I'm gonna go home now because my nose is cold. <laughs> like, as I came out of the woods just then, the old lady passed me with her dog. She's like, are you cold? I'm like, yeah, my nose is cold. <laughs> I'm just here wearing shorts while we're in a red danger warning storm. Nah, I'm all right. Like my feet are fine as long as I'm moving around. My, t my fingers get cold when I'm holding the camera out and my nose is cold because it's just cold. <sighs> my nose gets really cold in winter and burns so easily in the rest of the year. My nose has just been a problem my whole life and I don't know what to do about it. It's funny. People, whenever they see anyone different, they're like, how? <laughs> so many questions. You'd think that old people would have seen a lot in their lifetimes. A man wearing shorts in February shouldn't, shouldn't surprise them that much, really. I don't know people's lives. So a clip just like that, like, hey, I'm Jason, I've been barefoot for nearly seven years, every day. I threw away my last pair of shoes seven years ago, and since then I haven't bought any. Uh, I live in North Wales. It's kind of cold, but not that bad. Uh, yeah, just film something like that. That's all I need. Just because I want to see who out there is watching, who out, who out there wants to try the challenge. If you're filming with a phone, your phone is fine. I don't need you to film with a camera, a phone will do. Make sure when you're filming, please film like that. It makes the video look nicer, so thank you. Cool, excited for it. Yeah, next week sometime we'll, make the, we'll get the video together. Uh, right, where do you send me the clips? That's a good question, actually. Send it in an Instagram DM. So my Instagram is just at vthirdeye. Or if you want, you can email me, my email is down below. But uh, Instagram would be easier because I can just save it from the chat. Cool, thanks everybody excited for this little video collection we made together. Do you guys remember my roommate Dice Decides? He lives in Norway now. I keep trying to persuade him to hike barefoot in the snow and he finally did it. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll steal a piece of his vlog and put it in here. But um, there's a snow field so uh, I don't want to get snow in my shoes so I guess I'll have to go barefoot. <laughs> I just think it's so interesting. Like snow is not easy for me to come by. I have to like hike a few hours to get to snow. But he just has it everywhere so he can like challenge himself to walk in it. I think it's really fun. I'll be curious to see if anyone in, in the video has some snow in theirs. Snow's hard, like I, I don't recommend it, but if you want a challenge, hey. <laughs> Yeah.
it doesn't look like much until you add it all together, then it's like it's a lot of food. So I'm trying to be really careful with how I just portion myself. Someone agrees with you. Good uh, Natalie. Who are you, Natalie? Get out. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my neck's like, nope, stop here, guys. We've got enough blood. Again, what we got today, we got some fried tofu, some lemon juice, some spinach, uh, black rice again, kidney beans, parsnips again, more than yesterday, and what else is in there? Some butternut squash. Basically just doing the same as yesterday, but I'm adding spinach and a bit more of the curry sauce. Looks good. I'm excited. I'm gonna mum mum. Okay, vlog, I had some yummy food, so I'm just gonna end it here. Did I even do anything today? I don't know what I did today. My mind just goes blank when I get home. I wanted to read comments on yesterday's video. I haven't done that yet, so let's read them together. Uh, top comment. When I was about your age, I got chronically ill, went to see doctors for years, and did all kinds of crappy medical procedures. When nothing helped, and I got only more sick due to the pills they gave me, I decided to, to turn it around and take my health into my own hands. Long story short, it worked out, and a healthy diet was one of the most important factors in that. So yeah, if you want to grow old and healthy, what do you eat is extremely important. I agree, thank you very much. Uh, remembering how depressed you were, hearing you say you want to be here for a long time is growth, brother. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I don't get to see my friends a lot these days, and these vlogs always feel like a conversation with an old friend. It's been around since the old hair days. It's been nice to grow and think differently with you. Thanks for the chill vibes always. You're welcome, Kim. Thanks for being here. So a lot of people just agreeing that the whole nourishment thing is important. Uh, yeah, I, I get it. I've been eating, eating really nice the past two days. And I feel good. But this is just the beginning. I'm going to keep it going. I want to get lighter with the food so I start feeling lighter. Your view about living on a mountain is exactly what I tell everyone when they ask what the type of place where I want to live. I'm selective about the people that I allow around me. The people who you surround yourself with should uplift and inspire you. Also, would you be willing to share any recipes? I'm a plant-based, but I find myself eating the same meals over and over again. Sure. I mean, I'll share every day what, what I'm cooking, um, just because I'm experimenting at the moment, just figuring out what I like. But I'm going to keep changing it up. I don't want to repeat what I've been doing, which is find something that works for me and then keep doing it. Because we need variety. We can't just keep doing the same thing. My body was telling me that. <laughs> okay, so this comment says, The houses on the island are two fishing cottages originally built in the 1700s. Uh, I think they are now rentable accommodation for holidaymakers. Is that right? Cool. Nice video. Thought about buying a van, but you're making good points here. <laughs> Nutritionist here. Here's a tip on pasta. It's actually quite good for you when paired with veggies, but only if cooked correctly. Cook it al dente, so there's just a tiny bit of white flour in the middle. And it's actually good for the glycemic index. Obviously, fruits and veggies are, more, are important for phytonutrients, but pasta can help fill in the gaps with the micro macronutrients. It's much higher in protein than most people realize. Also, sourdough bread without oil or salt is good. Cool, thank you. Good to know. Uh, my brother went biking across Canada with a backpack and a tent. He said it really helped him mentally and was a great experience. For sure, anything physical like that is gonna be so good for you. <laughs> this is the, the one bad comment that somebody texted me. It's the nutritionist, what the heck? They wrote another comment which says, uh, they said, I live in a van full time in USA where it's a thousand times more practical than the UK. And I agree, it's much more comfortable. And I am a self-taught mechanic. It's super easy to learn. If anyone is interested, don't let this fool confuse you. Why call me a fool? <laughs> I'm just giving my opinion on a lifestyle that I'm tired of being recommended because I've already done it. I don't want to be a mechanic. I don't like clunky old machinery. Batteries make so much sense, and when I start driving electric, I'll learn how batteries work or how to wire them. I'm not going to learn something so old that's going to be outdated soon. There's just no point. It's like working how to be a fax machine producer. It's redundant. But yeah, I'm a fool just because I don't want to drive a van. I'm a full-time van dweller five years in. Never had any issues. Mechanically, eh, not really. Small fixes here and there, but I'm usually not driving everywhere. Usually just pick a spot and stay for months. Oh, well, I mean, you might as well just have a caravan if you're gonna do van life like that. So yeah, I was kind of re re referencing the van lifers on social media that are just going from one spot to another to another just to photograph it, just to get that little TikTok. Like, those kind of people. They're the ones 
promoting this lifestyle. But ones that just drive and then sit somewhere for months, then I wouldn't even call that van life. That's just existing in a small space. Break-ins could happen, although it's extremely rare being further out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, I know. The only time someone's tried to break into my vehicle is when I was sleeping in a city. They tried to do a, a smash and run, but they tugged at my door handle and it didn't quite open. It like half opened and the lights came on inside and they saw that I was in there and then they drove away immediately. But it freaked me out. I was trying to get to sleep and they just yanked at my door. Okay, so that person works on farms and then moves on. Yeah, fair. That's, a, that's one way to live. Sure. The Mushroom King. I kind of call myself the Mushroom King as a joke. That's what I used to call myself on Instagram. I'm definitely not the Mushroom King. I know nothing. Mushrooms are way smarter than me. I don't pretend to be the king of them. If anything, I'm, a, I'm their servant. I do their work. A Hobbit van? What the heck is a bot? You should do a night on VR chat. I would love to. I don't have a... I don't have a VR headset though. Having a hobbit narrowboat? Bro, you can't just call everything hobbit. Hobbits live in the ground. They don't live on boats. How much money do you need to create a GoFundMe? Nah, I'm, I'm never gonna do a GoFundMe for anything. There's, I don't want people to just give me money. I like to earn it. There's no effort there. I'm not producing anything. People aren't buying anything from me. They're just handing, no, nah, I can't do that. It's, it's weird. Even if I lost everything, I would never do a GoFundMe to try and bring it back. I would just learn to live with nothing. I need to put in the work. I need I need to go through the effort. Otherwise, there's no I'm not, there's no learning process there. I can't just be given. I can't I appreciate it, but I can't be handed what I want. Those comments weren't too brutal. There's only one person that didn't like the video. Maybe they did because they watched the whole thing to see the part. You have to realize, guys, when I'm trying to come up with a title and a thumbnail for a video, generally I'm just pulling Instagram photos and using them as a thumbnail, and then the title is just something that I mentioned in the video. The videos aren't specifically targeted about, they're not, they're not just one thing. I talk about a lot of stuff in these videos, loads of self subjects, so it's hard for me at the end of the day, or at the end of the night, when it's like 3 in the morning, I'm trying to come up with a video title so I can go to bed. I just write whatever I think will get the most clicks, guys, you gotta understand that. I'm not clickbaiting, but I am trying to, you know, just bring attention to what I'm making, otherwise what is the point? You have to understand that, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to trigger people. I'm really not. Just speaking my thoughts. I'm tired of being quiet so thank you for hanging out today I appreciate all of you leave a like on the video and I'll uh